Hi guys, how are you guys doing? I hope you're all well. I miss filming so much. It's actually been so long since I made a video. Um, obviously I've put a few videos up like in the past couple of weeks but that was filmed ages ago. I haven't actually sat down and you know set up and everything to make a video for a while so I don't know it feels really good to be back and to be filming again. I've been away if you've seen my vlog. Um, it's not really a vlog it's more like a combination of like snapchat videos and just random videos here and there that I put together when I went traveling. So yeah if you're interested definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description box but anyway in this video i just wanted to share with you how to pass any assignment to be honest um, i'm going to specifically talk about social work because that's what i talk about on my channel but you can apply this in any circumstance in any assignment and i'm sure it would help you do good so yeah um Without further ado, let's just get right into it. I hope you guys find it beneficial. If you do, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, let's get right into it. I've had a few queries about people, you know, asking for support around doing an assignment. And it's something that I can do. But when there's a couple of you, it's not so easy to respond to everyone and to provide like adequate supports everyone so I felt like if I do a video then it's available for you and you can access it anytime. So yeah I've got a few things written down that I'm going to share with you so pardon me if I keep looking down but yeah I feel like I've said yeah a thousand times already. <laughs> okay so for every assignment um, before I start actually I'm just going to say um, I think everyone has their own way of um, responding to assignments that they find easy so you know use this as a guide and not necessarily like a one way a one answer fits all. I'm going to give an example of an assignment in this um, and obviously like in uni assignments vary you could do it could be a case study it could be an essay it could be anything but generally they're around essay so the question that i'm going to use is going to be an essay and hopefully that is beneficial so yeah um usually when you're given an assignment your tutor or your lecturer wants you to demonstrate an understanding of that particular topic by doing that essay so it, your essay should give the your teacher the impression that you understand what you're talking about or you understand that particular topic so that should be the goal of the assignment and that should be the whole focus of the assignment so when you have that clear in your mind then you realize that it's important to cover all aspects of that particular topic that has been given in that assignment so I'm gonna go into further detail when I give an, a, an example of an assignment question but for now I'm just gonna give a few things that you need to make sure you cover um, so obviously in trying to show that you understand the topic it's important to give examples of things that are related to that particular topic especially if it's an essay usually essays are just like one-line questions but you can't just respond with a one-line answer usually they'll say you need to give a thousand words or 2500 words and the only way to do that is not just by giving a definition of that particular topic but by including examples of certain things depending on what you've been asked you need to back it up with references which is another point that's really important so everything that you quote or everything that um you know you talk about you need to put a reference next to it and every university has a different way of referencing so you need to find out what that is with your university and make sure you include that because you could lose a lot of marks if you don't reference properly okay so um, finding evidence to validate whatever your point is is really important that's my first point the next thing is if you're going to be researching using books and using online resources and stuff like that be careful with plagiarism 
so it's very easy to just copy and paste certain things that you may have seen online that's related to your assignments it's really important to adjust the wording if you can just to show that you actually have an understanding i'm not sure if this is with every university but with the university that i went to which was a while ago um you were required to submit through turn it in it's like a system a program thing called turn it in and turn it in identifies every sentence or every word that is written in another book that's in your assignment so in the end we'll give you a percentage and say maybe your plagiarism score is 50 percent or it's 10 percent if it's anywhere around 10 percent 15 percent you're not too bad but if it's anywhere from 20 and above then you have a problem you need to adjust the words so that it's not so bad because you lose a lot of marks if it's that high so yeah if you're going to be using um references and quoting from books and things like that make sure you adjust the wording and you know it's not too hard to do that it just takes a little more time and effort the next thing i will say is always make sure you draw a conclusion at the end of the essay or assignment or whatever you're doing make sure there is a summary of everything you've talked about in the essay at the end it's always important to um, you know summarize everything and give a brief around everything that you said in that essay at the end of the essay because it just you know I don't know how to, it just sort of concludes everything and it just sort, sort of puts everything together and it makes everything make sense so it's really important to do that and usually if you're given a lot of words you know you need, you need words to make up for it anyway so you could be repeating yourself but at the same time it sort of summarizes everything that you've talked about earlier on so in every essay, there needs to be an introduction, there needs to be a body, and then there needs to be a conclusion. So the body is where you would usually talk about, you know, you would usually talk about the research that you found that backs up the knowledge that you've spoken about in the introduction. So in the introduction is where you can say in this essay, I'm going to be discussing whatever it is, and then you move to the body, and then you, you know, provide evidence of what you're talking about, and then you move to a conclusion, and then you summarize everything that you've spoken about. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Another point, oh my God, this is the most important point. I forgot to mention it. So for me personally, because when essay questions are given to us, it's given to us in just one line. So I find it easy to break it down into smaller questions. That way I'm able to answer each of them individually. And then at the end, I make sure I've covered all those little questions that I put together at the beginning in the conclusion. And that way I know I've actually answered the question so let's get right into the example because it'll be so much easier to just do it that way okay so the example i'm going to use is the question is discuss the impacts of domestic violence on culturally and linguistically diverse communities so obviously it's a one-line question but in your response it won't just be um you know impacts on them in a negative way or something like that because generally you'll be asked to respond in a thousand words or in 2500 words or whatever so if you're going to break this down this is what you need to cover you need to discuss what domestic violence is that would be the main thing so if you're breaking it down the first thing would be what is domestic violence the next thing will be um, what are some of the effects of domestic violence on people um, the next thing will be who what, who does domestic violence affect in general and then you can move into um, you know uh, how domestic violence has impacted on people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds in general and then you can find statistics through research to back up your claims to say you know maybe we found that 50% of Chinese women are impacted on domestic violence or whatever that is and you make sure you reference that as well and then in conclusion you will summarize everything that you've spoken about and say you know so in conclusion domestic violence is um, is uh, intimate partner abuse and um, has been found to impact on 50% of Chinese women within Australia and um, it impacts on them the impacts of the on them can include um, you know physical health issues emotional health issues child protection issues blah 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 etc so that would summarize everything that you've spoken about 
so yeah this was a little rambly but which of my videos isn't i hope you guys have found this video beneficial if you have definitely give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and yeah i guess i'll see you in my next video bye guys